everyone. Hello, hello, hello. We are back with another exciting episode. I trust all is well with you. Thank you again for joining us. We have a great show today, and I know our guest will be a blessing to you. So grab your water, your coffee, your tea, snacks, and enjoy this conversation because I know it will be a blessing to you. It is my prayer today that these words, as they're coming out, that it will be broken down into several different pieces, that it will meet a need, that the Holy Spirit will speak through us, even as I have this conversation with my sister. Um, and these words will be custom made just for you and yours to answer some questions that you've had or be a solution to some of your quests. Um, my guest is actually, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read a little bit of a, a bio and she may introduce herself too when she comes in. Our guest today is an Associate Vice President of Human Resources at Morgan State University. She's a senior certified professional in human resources committed to serve the most critical assets of an organization, which is its people. As an accomplished professional in human resources, my guest had work, has worked to create systems to make the employee experience at many of Maryland's institution of higher education. As a result of our influence throughout the state of Maryland in human resources, she was invited to serve on the client advisory board at Fidelity Investments, a compassion and dedication to authentic engagement of an employee aligns with MSU, MSU University of uh, Morgan State University, that is core values which are leadership, innovation, integrity, diversity, excellence, and respect. Married and raising husbands in our three boys, she models a life of compassion in and out of work, in and out of the workplace. This is just this type of, you know, the, the person that, that my guest is, and you'll get to meet her shortly. At our church, she serves as the director of social welfare ensuring that 350 plus congregation are provided with engaging and fulfilling activities and programs. Additionally, she volunteers with Kingdom Girls Inc., where she's affectionately known as a coach, mentoring young women, 18 to 21 year olds, through learning experiences that will help them achieve, achieve emotional physical, social, and spiritual well-being. She holds a Bachelor's of Arts in Communication from Howard, Howard University, a Master's Degree in Human Resources Development from Bowie State University, and a Master's from University of Baltimore in Negotiation and Conflict Management. And if I may add, she is a mentor, a role model to many, 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 amazing amazing women of god amazing woman of god she is just such an inspiration and i know she will be an inspiration to you today please help me welcome my special guest mrs shivani oyegoke can you hear me, you so can you hear me? Much. i can hear you can you hear me i can hear you okay thank right. you for coming thank on the show oh my goodness it's such a blessing to have you uh how are you doing how's your day been I'm good. It's been a, a trying day in the world of human resources, but um, yeah. we thank God. We thank God. I see, I see you wearing it with a big smile on your face, so I can't really tell. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And we will get more into that throughout our conversation. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I know I've said quite a few, uh, uh, a lot about you, but um, just, uh, you know, something that I didn't get to or something you also like our, our viewers to know about yourself. Can you tell us maybe just a little bit more about yourself and how you got here, maybe in a nutshell? Sure, no problem. Um, I want to first thank you, Joyce, for having me here today. Um, when you reached out to me, I said, okay, I'll do it. But then I really got into it. Um, and I really appreciate you and all you're doing for your viewers um, these talks are really helpful. And so I appreciate you and will be happy to do this for you. So a little bit about myself again. Um, I actually uh, was born in England and um, raised by Jamaican parents and moved to and migrated to America a long time ago. 
Um, I was in New York and decided to um, move to Washington, D.C. to attend Howard University. And through my um, process at Howard University, you know, I changed majors, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to be Oprah. I wanted to be Claire Huxtable from the Clasby Show. I wanted to do a whole lot of things. Um, but through my course of um, Howard University, I had to focus. I kind of had to focus. It was getting expensive. Um, and so I decided to major in legal communications. Um, I like to speak in front of people and I like policy and I like the law. Um, so I graduated with a bachelor's in communications. Um, I've moved on throughout human resources. I have over 20 years experience in human resources. I started out as an HR assistant all the way to my position now. And I've worked in various industries, um, retail, nonprofit, but primarily higher education. Um, I have obtained my master's from Bowie State University as well as University of Baltimore. And those were specific to human resource development and negotiation and conflict management. Um, so that's where I, you know, that is my trajectory. That's a little bit about myself and my career. Again, I'm married um, and I have three beautiful children and um, I have a lot of family and friends that support me, including Joyce, um, who's interviewing me here today. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love that. You are so, she's, when she's speaking, you kind of just have to listen because she's very, you know, sophisticated. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, as you already, you know, guess what we're going to be talking about today. And that's why I, I, I love to have her as a professional to dive into HR. Sometimes you graduate and you don't know what to do. Sometimes you you get out of school and we're wondering what's next. How do I even get into this space, corporate world? How do I do this? And one thing I also, before we kind of get into, you know, the core of what we want to speak about today is to talk social media. Now, social media lately, I don't think, with the way things are going, I think sometimes we forget that social media doesn't forget. And when we're looking for a job, um, I think it was one of my job that I noticed that people actually go on to search on social media to see what your image is online. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I, I wanted to maybe maybe talk about that a little bit. Does social media affect our, or impact our, or influence getting a job? If, if there's even a thing as a social media image, um, just as a league rate, what, what we want to talk about. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I believe it does. Um, and again, I want to use my own personal opinion. Um, and you all determine what is best for you. But you'll hear me say that a lot. I believe so. I believe in my career in human resources, people want to associate themselves with success or good people and people that can represent their brand appropriately. Um, so for me, it has always been important what my social media looks like. Um, and fortunately for me, because I've branded myself a certain way, I believe that it is a magnet and attracts um, people to me for my networking, as well as opportunities that I've had. And whether that's my personal brand such as Facebook or um, Instagram and all of that, or my professional social mm -hmm. media brand, which is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, it is key for me. That's how people recognize me and reach out to me to ask me if I want to work for their organization. So mm -hmm. they pretty much reach out to me through LinkedIn because they like what they see. So um, I would say this though, that's my opinion. And it's also my career path. This mm -hmm. also depends on your role in the organization. It also depends on your industry, it depends on what you specifically do. Now, because I'm in leadership um, and in the C-suite, it's highly important for people to look me up and see what I'm about and see what I've accomplished. Um, and in addition to that, um, it 
organizations now have to look at themselves in regards to ways that they associate with employees, especially for this cancel culture. So if they can see things on your social media that do not align with the mission, vision, and values of the organization, that may be a determination of not to um, solicit you for employment for their organization, because I am at a level where people are looking for me. I don't um, look around as much for roles of organizations, but people are always um, tapping into me because of my social media. So I would definitely say it depends on your role, depends on your industry. But if you're like in marketing and PR and human resources and things like that, mm -hmm. it is key. And even if the organization says they don't look, they look. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you that you said that. I remember searching online for my first job and I was looking, oh, how should I dress? And I saw that there are actually certain colors that you can wear for an interview. I didn't even know that was a thing. So how does your appearance, I know you talked about social media and I started with that for a reason because everything is social media and now things just go wild on social media and we forget that, you know, there's still a professional piece to us and the way we present ourselves online, people see, you know, is this the person that I want to hire? Is this the person that I want to represent my company? So um, in terms of appearance and dressing, how does that, how, how does appearance actually weigh into, you know, an interview outcome, if that makes sense? It does make sense. And, yeah. and again, this is very specific to the industry or the role and the kind, kind of position that you have. Um, mm -hmm. But my experience as a hiring manager that makes a decision on a person, it does weigh in. Um, I'm looking at how you can re represent me whether I'm in the room or whether I'm not in the room. I'm looking at how you are groomed. I'm looking at if you um, hold yourself professionally and that's in person, but that's also on Zoom. What do, what do you look like? Um, so it, for me, it's, it's very important. I also want to say um, part of grooming is smelling good. I have been in interviews where I closed the door and I had to open the door back again because the person didn't smell appropriate. I'm sorry, I'm laughing, so, but wow, really? It is, it is the truth. And so you have to make sure that you look at professionally and um, not look a certain way, but look professionally so that the interview interviewer can quickly get past that and start listening to the substance of your interview. You don't want anything to inhibit you being able to present yourself verbally. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm telling you now, if you're not presentable um, physically, it may be a distraction to your actual interview. And they may not be able to hear anything that you're saying because they're focusing on why does this person smell like this? Especially mm -hmm. with um, the ability now for people to um, smell um, not, um, substance, certain substances. So um, when you're coming into the interview, um, make sure that you are groomed, make sure that you're presentable. Um, and it's just like, you know, for those, those of you that go to church, you look your best on Sundays, right? You, you change a little bit from Monday through Friday to how you look on Sunday. And so that's what an organization wants, that you put in some effort um, in order to present yourself well during an interview. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. I know I know you said that. I think I, I may have maybe just one more, more question with that relating to appearance. And um, there was a native view I went for, I believe, a couple of years ago, a few, not even a couple, uh, a while back. And I packed my hair in a bun. And unknown to me, my gel was flaky. My edge control was flaky. <laughs> my hair rings, I lost one of them. So I didn't realize this until after the interview. And I went to the bathroom because I've been holding this for like a good 30 minutes or so. I couldn't say, excuse me, can I run? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize this until I finished the interview. And I was wondering what type of impression, you know, they, they had of me eventually, like after I left. So what is that first thing that you pay attention to when a candidate walks into the um, again, for me, I look at um, whether they're presentable 
And an earring or gel flaking is not what I'm looking for. It's the, uh, again, that you came prepared for um, the role. I'm also looking at your mannerisms. Did you shake my hand or in this world now, did you give me a fist bump? Or um, did you come in and greet everybody that's in the room? A lot of organizations do, pan um, they do panel interviews. So I'm looking for you to make sure that you acknowledge everybody in the room. Um, also looking for you to, um, additional mannerisms that you're calling people by name, um, that you're engaging with them. Um, so I am looking for those specific things. But again, the hiring manager on the other end, um, everyone comes with their own likes, dislikes, biases. So it really depends on the, the hiring manager. But again, I'm also looking for people to look me in the eye when they talk to me, um, engage with me. I specifically like humor um, to kind of ease, ease the room. And I, if you don't give it, I'll give it and I'll see how you react to the humor. Oh, wow. um, but again, I, I do. So the other piece of this is, again, we're on Zoom now. And so yeah. we may not see all those mannerisms in person. So it's, in, it's important for you to have a clear picture. We don't want anyone in the background changing clothes. Um, we don't want you out in the open space. We want you professional and presentable on Zoom. And we, all can, we can also see mannerisms on Zoom, right? If we're interviewing you with questions and you're looking down the whole entire time, whether it's reading or whatever, you're not engaging me. And I can't um, see you or hear you or you know, really understand who you are. So um, whether it's in person or on Zoom, do your best to be presentable and engage the hiring manager. Wow, that, that, that is, um, see the things that you're saying, they're nuggets, because I didn't know that this counted, like in terms of the smell and the way you present yourself, uh, even with the, because before I used to be just and shake, make sure you shake family like the person and then now because of COVID it, it's different the way we but it, it's just amazing just hearing from a professional because there are a lot of things maybe we, we may have some miss um I guess interpretation of certain things that goes on in the room sometimes we're like um yes. and speaking of uh, panels um there was an interview I went for there were three panels right and I was wondering who should I smile to who was nicer who was friendlier who, who wasn't so after a candidate exits the room, what happens? Who makes that final decision? So going to your question, who do you smile to? Everybody. Um, who do you talk to? Everybody. The entire time, if they're asking you questions, if all three people ask you questions, you look at that person when you answer the question. Because to answer your question, all of them have a decision in your hiring. Ultimately, it is the hiring manager. That's the person that you're going to live with eight, eight to 10 hours a day, five days a week. Um, so it's the hiring manager that has the ultimate decision. But the other search panel folks will weigh in. In addition to that, the, the receptionist at the front desk will weigh in. HR will weigh in with the emails that you have been sending back and forth um, in order to prepare for the interview. They will weigh in. So all of that is something that you need to consider when you start the process for your interview. Sending that email with your resume and your cover letter starts the process. You need to make sure that you are professional and engaged all the way until they have um, offered you that position and even after that. Mm, wow, wow, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. That, <laughs> that is big. So with that, with all of that that you're looking at or looking for or making sure maybe the candidates um, are possessed when, when they come in or walk in the door, what are some mm -hmm. deal breakers for you? Like throughout the course of your career, what are some things that you see and you're like, oh, no, no, that's not going to work like a deal breaker for you? Um, so for me now, um, deal breaker for me is that you're not smiling. <laughs> uh, that you don't have a personality. I can't work with anyone that does not have a personality. Um, I also, another deal breaker is that you are so focused on the interview and answering questions 
you're not really being your authentic self. I, mm -hmm. I want to know who you are. Um, so I would suggest that folks use examples because the examples provide the hiring manager with not just your technical skills, but the soft skills that are even more important. Like how do you use discretion? How do you um, use your judgment? How do you manage a project? What's the process for you in your head of how mm -hmm. to approach challenges or struggles or assignments. So that's, those are the things that I'm trying to look for. And if you are just in front of me reading off a script in your head um, and I cannot engage with you, that's a deal breaker for me. Um, again, if you're not memorable, that's a deal breaker. And again, if you haven't researched the specific position that you applied for or the company, I know you want a job and there's a zillion jobs out there but you're not invested into working with me and my organization. So those are some of the, things that are the deal breakers for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure people looking at this later on will be taking notes. This is, this is I mean, these are good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh -huh. So just shifting the gear just a little bit. Um, so this is the season of graduation. I know we have a lot of, you know, nieces, nephews and everyone graduating in the season. So as a young person going to college, a senior in high school or college graduate, how can we prepare them for this corporate America? So I, from the perspective of a graduate, mm -hmm. um, specifically college graduate, but this can also apply to high school graduates. I want you to think outside the box. And I want you to try everything. I mean, again, because your experiences and your tries prepare you for the workplace. Um, and again, you're gaining skills in whatever you do, whether it's leadership skills or technical skills or whatever it is, you need to learn those skills in order to move forward in your career. So even if you have to volunteer um, whether it's a pay, paid internship or whether you have an offer for a full-time position. Um, if, if it works for you, do what's best for you, but try everything. I know many of us are, you know, focused on, I have this job. I, I went to school for accounting and I got this first accounting job, but there's something else out there that piques my interest. Well, if you know you're going to do accounting for the next 40, 50 years, why not try that just for a, a few months or a few years? You never know what it would lead into. So gain new skills. But again, do what's for you. For the high school graduates, um, and I'm even going to put in middle school graduates because I have a middle schooler and I'll tell you what I'm doing for him. Um, try everything. Volunteer everything. So specific for my middle schooler, um, I want him to look at different careers. I don't want him to really figure out what he wants to do and be in life at 14. So I just signed him up and he doesn't know this yet, but maybe he'll know before you all watch this broadcast. Um, but I signed him up for a whole lot of things this summer. Um, he's going to go to a camp for broadcast journalism, sports board class journalism. He has not said anything to us about what he wants to do, but I just want him to experience it for a week. He's going to go to um, a camp for counselors and training where they train him on peer mediation and yes. um, teach him leadership skills. And that will give him his service credit for high school to graduate, but it will also give him an opportunity to learn those skills that are necessary to work with people, to work with um, teachers. And at some point they will hire him back in the later years when he's eligible to, to be a camp counselor at that camp. So just allow your kids to do whatever it is they choose. In looking, there's pharmacy camps, there's, um, there's camps for everything. So each and every year or whatever it is, find some camps or volunteer work and things like that, that these children can do so that they can expose themselves and discover things that they may like to do as they grow up. Yes. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's great. That is great. Oh, wow. 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 So, yes. So, um, so I'm looking at uh, some of our recent graduates, right? 
and some of them just want to basically enjoy life and you know after school or even started working they want to travel they want to i'm not saying anything is bad about those things but then you know as they progress in their career even if you're doing right now get into something you don't really want to do and you just want to do it because that's the first job you got out of school what would be your advice for just um, new graduates from college going to you know they, they're off they don't know whether or not they want to do maybe postgraduate what would be your advice to, to those people um i am going to actually um say that the best thing for you to do at this time and and, and there's going to be many seasons of this and mm -hmm. so i say practice this very early um is for you to consult with god and have him lead you and direct you where he wants you to go. Um, obtain the vi advice of friends and family, um, if you're comfortable with that. But I want you to keep an open mind. It's not always about the job, the title, the company, um, the money. It's also about the experience, the mentorship, your development and your growth. So I want you to write down your wants and your needs in your career and really think about when these opportunities come to you, um, what you should be doing. And if opportunities are not coming to you, then you need to start building your network. You need to start building your database, go in on LinkedIn and put your information out on LinkedIn, and then also learn new skills and tools and things like that that will help you in your career. What I typically do um, when I wanted to move up in my career is I would start looking for jobs. Even if I wasn't qualified, I would read what the minimum qualifications were. I would read what the skills and characteristics were, and I would find opportunities to do that. I would find opportunities to do that at church. I yeah. would find opportunities to do that in my community. If yeah. I was in a volunteer program, such as Kingdom Girls, I would use that as an opportunity to make myself also. Because again, you are preparing yourself and gaining skills and also creating a network. So I would yeah. suggest while you wanna travel, while you wanna enjoy yourself and go to concerts and things like that, you need to put in the work also to, um, to kind of move forward your career and the things that you wanna do. You can do it simultaneously. It's better when you have a job with stable money and some benefits because you can go abroad and get hurt and you need those benefits to make sure they yeah. bring you back to the country and you can take <laughs> care of yourself. So yeah. you can do it in parallel, um, but you just have to sit down, take time again, um, make sure that God is leading you the whole entire time and doors will open for you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one other question. I think you touched up on it um, a little bit. I know corporate America is very competitive. You know, even though, you know, we just graduated for the recent grad graduates, for instance, they're coming out and maybe the first job may be the one they will take. And now for someone who is trying to maybe switch or change careers, um, I think I always, well, I think that's what it is now that it's an employer's market because there's so many jobs out there. Many people are looking and you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's my, you know, I'm not in HR, so I can't tell if, <laughs> but um, how do you stand out in the midst of com competition? There's so many. People um, mm. So right now it actually is an employee market. Ah, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So there's more opportunities out there for employees, especially now. Um, so it really depends on the industry and, and all that other good stuff. But mm -hmm. in higher education, it's the employees market. Um, I think in corporate America too, um, it is an employees market. Yes, there are a lot of jobs, um, but when you only have three, four, five people applying to those jobs, it is folks want to work remotely. They want benefits. They want work-life balance. They're asking for all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it wasn't like that four or five mm -hmm. years ago. 
But this pandemic really um, settled some things where people are like, I kind of like being home a little bit more. So organizations, um, well, higher education in my space where we're asking employees to come back to work, we're getting a lot of pushback and we're losing some talented people who want the flexibility of working from home and that work-life balance. So um, standing out, I would definitely say, um, and this is for me, be yourself, be authentic. And the reason why I say that is because when you are called in for an interview, they know you can do the job. They only want you to come in for an interview to find out who is the best fit for that manager, for that department, for that organization. And so be yourself. The reason why I say that is because you too have to interview the organization. They have to stand out for you. You don't want to be in an organization where you cannot be your authentic self. And as Joyce says, there's a lot of jobs out there, right? You need to find an organization that you want to work for, that you believe in their mission, vision, and values, because that's how you move throughout the organization. And it doesn't mean that you have to move up because everyone doesn't want to be in management or leadership. But again, I said, that's how you move through the organization, because you may not want to be the same in the same position for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years until you retire. But if you find an organization that you really like, you can move through it mm -hmm. and, you know, get other opportunities through the ability to network and things like that and try new things with the organization because you are yourself, you are authentic, and also you've done the work and you can do a really good job. So I'm standing out again, be yourself, be authentic. What's meant for you is for you. If they called you in for the interview, they know you have the technical ability and you can do your job. Now you are just selling yourself and mm -hmm. in selling yourself authentic so that when you start on day one, that is the person that they met on the interview all the way through the rest of your career. Right, right. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, and then you said something now that I would, um, so for someone um, who is, um, trying to get into a new career space you said be yourself they know you can do the job but for someone who's trying to do a, something different for lack of a, a better word and they don't really quite have that experience what will be your advice any thoughts any suggestion for those type of people that are trying to navigate a new career space absolutely you have to sell yourself and tell the hiring manager how your skills transfer into the role that you're applying for. You have to sit down and you have to research the position, understand the position, understand the company, and then sell to them how your skills will make you the perfect candidate for this role. But you have to do the work. You can't send your resume or walk in an interview and ask the, the hiring manager to help you figure out how you can do this job. That's not their job, that's your job. So mm -hmm. spend some time really teasing out what they are asking for in the, in the position announcement, and then just go line by line. You asked for this, this is my experience, and this is how I would take that skill to help you in this situation. And now organizations are very results oriented and solutions oriented, Share with them your thoughts on how they can solve problems. Share with them your thoughts on um, how you can help them with, you know, various issues that they're having. But again, you have to do your homework. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I, I believe this will be helping a lot of people. And I, I just have just a few more questions for you uh, with the sure. salary <laughs> salary area. I remember... I probably took the first salary they offered me for my first job out of college. No negotiation, nothing. I, I'm like, oh, I'll be working. I'm making this, this amount up. Do you want to pay me this much? I'll do it. So please talk to us about how to negotiate salary. What are some tips on how you can, that you can share with us and why is it important mm -hmm, to negotiate? Joyce, you, 
you are one of um, many and um, we all do it. We are all, uh, when you get the job and they offer you money, half the time you don't even hear it. You're just like, thank you. That's it. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, so my tip is to negotiate. Just like you would go to the market and negotiate when they tell you it's $10 for this and you say, ah, but I only have seven. Or why now? You don't do it like that. Be professional, but negotiate. Yeah. Negotiate, mm -hmm. negotiate, negotiate. Um, and if negotiate sounds like a hard word and you don't even want to go there, then change the, the terminology from negotiation to ask. Mm -hmm. Ask for what you want. Um, I do want to, um, but also I also want to say, if you're going to ask for more, make sure you do your research. It doesn't make sense you asking for an exorbitant amount of money and that's not... Um, the salary that's meant for that role. So do do your research. You need to understand how much that um, position is worth and um, determine how that position is valued in the organization and come up with a salary. There's way to research. There's salary.com, there's Glassdoor, there's all that other kind of stuff. Go out there and do your research for what um, the market salary is for that position. And it may be off a little bit, but again, definitely ask the question. I also want to say it's not just about money. Negotiate everything. Negotiate time off. Um, negotiate um, flexible schedule. Um, negotiate training dollars. Um, negotiate them paying for your bachelor's degree or your master's degree or law school. There's so much more than salary. You don't want to go to an organization and then you have to pay for everything out your pocket. If the organization pays for certain things, think about that also as part of your compensation. The compensation is not just money, it's your time, it's your um, development and growth, and all of those things are to be considered when thinking about negotiation. Got it, got it. Thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> um, I think we're moving to the end now. Um, the, my last one that I didn't get to, and I know you mentioned, you know, um, in terms of who makes the decision, like who, who has the final say on whether or not they hire the person. Um, it starts from the secretary or the person at the front desk, and you know, the panelists and all of that. So, in terms of like thank you notes, I was having this conversation with my sister. Who was also in the in academia uh she uh was saying we we're talking about thank you notes and how important is that um how important is, is, is how important is um thank you notes like after an interview does it does it influence the hr decision it can it can influence the decision depending on what you're writing in there right so i would suggest everybody write a thank you note I would also suggest take the extra step of making sure that you make it personal, that it's not just a canned thank you note that says, thank you for the interview. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon. In my thank you notes, I say that is my first sentence. And then I start talking about the interview. I also include something that they said to me and I've thought further about it. And I would like to add this because then that says I was engaged. I was listening. I paid attention and I'm just following up. I like to make my thank you notes memorable. So they're always funny with some humor in there. Um, and so it is, it, it's important for me, but if you're just sending me, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, call me when you're done. I, it, I would say send it anyway, because um, it's not bad if you don't send it, but if all, if, if they were hiring five, I'm sorry, if they were interviewing five people and four people sent their thank you notes and you didn't, mm. then they would wonder why. Mm. So just, just do it. But I would definitely say, make it memorable, make it um, something that communicate something that happened in the interview so that they can remember who you were. If they're interviewing five, six seven people and they're just getting these thank you notes, they're not going to know who you were from the rest of the bunch. So make yours memorable so that it can tick 
something off in their head and, and so they can say, oh, that's Shivani. I remember her. Okay. This is, wow. Okay. I like this. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. So yes, yes, we're moving to the hand. Is there anything else you'd like to add? And thank you again for coming on the show. This is this has been amazing. I just enjoy, you know, speaking with you and just hearing because every time we have a conversation, whether it's outside of church or anywhere, I feel like I leave a little smarter because you always you have all this. Uh, you're just an amazing person. That's why I appreciate you coming on the show. That all there are viewers who can enjoy what I I've been enjoying my friendship, a sisterhood. Um, just, uh, you know, everything together. So thank you for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add in terms of, you know, HR or, you know, looking for another job or, you know, job search or the, the, the you know, the, the, the HR world, if, if that, I should say that. I, I would share a piece of advice that was given to me early in my career that has served me over the 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it is, to get you an executive board. And what that executive board is for me personally are people in my space um, that will promote me or push me because many times I won't do it myself. So on your executive board, it could be three people, five people, seven people, but it should be one friend that's gonna be honest with you. It should be a colleague that has professionally worked with you. Um, if you haven't gone, um, if you are not in a professional world yet and you're in, in college, that one, um, somebody that's in like your group that mm -hmm. you're always working on projects with that see you in that professional light, let them be on there. Um, mm -hmm. But throughout the course of your career, always have, um, this group of people. Now you don't have to get them together. You can mm -hmm. call them when you're going through a season. So for instance, when I was applying for um, manager level roles, I would call on my previous supervisors mm -hmm. um, to tell me what I can do in, in to get into management. When I got into the director level role, I did the same thing. How do I, um, I engage with my previous colleagues. I engage with my previous bosses and some of my friends to push me. And definitely in the C-suite um, as CHRO, um, I needed those people to push me, to mm -hmm. talk to me, to tell mm -hmm. me and encourage me and those kind of things, but also share their experiences um, mm -hmm. in getting in, into that level. So definitely have mentors. Definitely have um, friends um, mm -hmm. to help you um, propel yourself into that professional role. And that mm -hmm. will be your network. They will be the people that you use for references. I can tell you of my whole entire 20 year career, I still talk to people for my very first job. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a manager or whether it was a colleague, I still have those relationships. So anytime anyone wants to ask me for a recommendation, pick one. I have a team. Mm -hmm. And it's because I went to the organization. I made an impression. I did the work. Mm -hmm. I did the work well. And I left well. I didn't burn any bridges. And mm -hmm. I kept those relationships. And not only now are they professional relationships, but they're also personal relationships that is do not burn your bridges i love it thank you so much for sharing that um now on social media i know miss trivani mrs trivani or yogeke she shares a lot of goodies sometimes if they're like volunteer work or so how can we follow you on social media um as well i know you're on facebook <laughs> I am on Facebook. I am on, I, you probably can't get me on Facebook. I think I maxed out on the number of people and people mm -hmm. trying to get me and can't get on my Facebook. So um, for professional, let's go on LinkedIn. I am Shivani, C-H-E-V-O-N-I-E, O-Y-E-G-O-K-E -E, um, on LinkedIn. And I believe actually Logan is in there, my maiden name for um I think it's still in there. So it may be Shivani Logan Oyugoke, but put in Morgan State University, put in um, Chief Human Resources Officer, 
or put in HR um, and you will find me. So I really, again, Joyce, thank you so much for allowing me to do this. I was happy to share and I really hope it helps somebody um, definitely network with me, reach out to me. And if I can answer a personal, professional question, let me know. Just go ahead and DM me on LinkedIn and we'll get in touch. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so, so, so much. You're such a blessing. Thank you so much. So take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye -bye. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Guys, it's been amazing. Wow, 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 wow. She's just a wonderful person. I I, um, I enjoy talking to her, whether it's outside of church or inside, you know, even on this type of platform. Uh, Mrs. Shivani Oyogoke, she's an amazing person. Um, just the nuggets that she has given to us today. Thank you for listening and tuning in. I hope our conversation has helped someone out or helped you answer some questions that you had and you weren't able to find out on your own online. The Bible says that the steps of a just man are ordered by God. I pray that God will lead and guide you in your line of business, in your career space that you are in right now or even plan to venture into. You can catch up with our previous shows online, on YouTube. We're on Get Inspired series with Joyce. We're on social media everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you know, every, all the same name, Get Inspired Series with Joyce. Again, thank you. Thank you so much, my special guest. Um, I, I know she's been a blessing to you as she, she was to me today. Um, again, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. watching. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.